dance floor as you can hear what he has to say. He's with his dance floor, he thinks the world is all over. What up, Nets fans? Nets boy here bringing you the latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. So, this is my end of season wrap up video. And so, it's basically going to be negative because, man, did the Nets suck this year. But, I mean, it was kind of expected. But, so, we're going to, I've got a lot to talk about in this video. I'm going to try to wrap it up and keep it not too long because I know some of my videos get a little draggy. Um, but we have to talk about the big news that happened uh, last night, and that was the announcement of Kenny Atkinson as the new head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. Um, I wasn't even sure that the Nets were going to actually get a head coach anytime soon. I didn't think that this was going to happen until over the summer. Um, but, you know, Sean Marks has been working hard, like, ever since he got the job as the uh, GM and his made a, the first really major move um, in, in uh, bringing in Kenny Atkinson, who is currently the assistant coach for the Atlanta Hawks under Mike Butenholzer. And um, he used to also coach under Mike D'Antoni. He has never been a head coach, so this is his first head coaching job. But he has been an assistant coach for several years, and obviously he's been uh, regarded as a very good assistant coach. And obviously, I guess Sean Marks liked what he's had to say about his player development and his experience and, and knowledge of the game that he said, okay, you got the job. I didn't even hear of this guy, really, in the interview process of who, of who the Nets were looking at, uh, looking, um, looking at. I mean, the Nets have gone completely like a 180 over what they've normally done. You know, normally they've been doing these, you know, the big sexy hires, like when they hired Jason Kidd and then they had, you know, Billy King as a GM. He had his high, big reputation. People knew about him and they always try to make a big splash. They've completely gone on 180 on that, which I think makes sense because I think those big splashes have hurt them. They go with Sean Marks, who's relatively under the radar guy uh, as the GM. And now they go with Atkinson as the, uh, as the coach, which is very under the radar, not a big splash. Uh, personally, I was hoping that Mark Jackson would have gotten a call and gotten the job. I really love Mark Jackson. I've talked about him in several videos, and I think he's one of the best coaches, um, or one of the best coaching candidates out there. But whatever, I, I don't, I don't really have. I'm indifferent about Kenny Atkinson because I don't know anything really about him other than the fact that he's currently the assistant coach for the Hawks. So uh, there won't be a formal press release or uh, press conference to introduce him until the end of the playoffs for the Hawks. So probably not for another two or three weeks. But it was just announced yesterday that he is the new head coach. So that's the first thing. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, but like I said, this video is the end of season wrap-up video. And basically to sum up the Nets this season is just disappointment. I know the Nets going into this season was not supposed to be that good of a team, but I still expected them to make the playoffs. If you go way back at my very first videos of the season, I said I saw them going as an eight seed, being around a, a, a 500 team, or maybe a little bit under 500. I, I said similar to last year, winning 38 games. So for them to go 21 and 61 is extreme disappointment. Now, there's a lot of variables that went into that. Obviously... Losing Jarrett Jack was probably the biggest one. It was evident that the Nets just could not figure it out their point guard situation when Jack went down. Now, they were struggling prior to Jack, but you could at least see the potential the team had, you know, in some of their wins earlier on in the season and some of the games they played. And when Jack went down, it was over. And, uh, you know, obviously you also take into consideration that Lopez and Young got shut down for the last five games. That didn't help. Um, you know, and then, you know, Joe Johnson being a shell of himself before he really got bought out. That didn't help. There were a lot of variables. A lot of players didn't work out too well. But I still see this as a disappointing year. But then I kind of don't because I like the ideas that Sean Marks has so far moving forward. And obviously he has a plan because he's been making some moves and implementing it, trying to create player development and get some good young players. I really think, 
you know, Sean Kilpatrick has really emerged as a really good player in the league. I think Markel Brown has emerged as a solid rotational guy. And um, and I liked what I saw from Rondé Hollis-Jefferson and Chris McCullough, uh, especially Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. I think he's got a lot of potential to be a really good uh, uh, player in, uh, on the Nets. Um, I see him as that classic starting wing defender who will um, – not be much of an offensive player, but kind of like a a uh, you know Tony Allen type of defensive player, a Matt Barnes type defensive player, and maybe at best I see him maybe being like a Trevor Ariza type guy, you know, a guy who is really just a great defensive guy, but works on his game enough where he can develop into be an offensive threat, but not an offensive player. So that's where I see him going in the next couple of years. Chris McCullough, I think, has a fantastically high ceiling. He's just a, he's a very skilled player for his size. Um, you know, he's not super strong, though, and that's what he needs to work on. But I, I see him, I, I see the comparisons to Thaddeus Young. That's what they've said about him when he got drafted. He's like Thaddeus Young. I see it. Um, I think he actually shoots the three ball better than Young as of now, though. So I think he could be more of a better stretch four than Young is, but I see that him kind of molding into Thaddeus Young type of player, which is always nice to have because versatility is key. Um, so those two guys, fantastic this year. I, I give those guys, well, I don't want to say fantastic because, you know, but I'm optimistic about their development. Boyan Bogdanovich, you know, he had that one great, like, 44-point performance. It was ridiculous. Um, but I don't know. He is definitely a rotational player, but it's like he's so inconsistent. You don't know what you're getting out of him. It's a little frustrating, but, you know, he had a hot and cold season. And Thomas Robinson, same way. Thomas Robinson, towards the end of the season, though, was playing phenomenally, averaging like 17 rebounds and, and like 16 points like the last 10 games. Um, you know, so I'm not sure exactly where he's going. Shane Larkin, up and down season as well. A lot of up and downs for these players individually. But there are players that are on my suck list and crap list and useless list. Wayne Ellington, useless. I know he had some games where he was decent. Useless. Don't like him. Never have. He's a waste of roster spot. I'd rather them play Markel Brown and, and Boyan Bergonovich and Sean Kilpatrick before Ellington. So he's, off, he's on my useless list. Sergey Karasev, beyond useless. This guy could go down as one of those useless players the Nets have ever had. Um, he's got to go. Um, Willie Reed left the team because of personal reasons. Useless. I mean, he played decent at times, but useless. Uh, let's see. Chris Sims. Not Chris Sims. I said that. did that last time. Henry Sims. Relatively useless. I mean, he is what he is. Not the best player. He's kind of useless. Uh, let's see. Who else? Donald Sloan useless he's he had some good games as well but he was ultimately useless so those guys are on my useless list um you know thomas like i said thomas robinson and shane larkin and markel brown their guys are all there they were borderline useful but they have to develop more so when i look back at this season you see why the nets did struggle and it was more about development and it does make me a little optimistic from some of the things we can take away the biggest positives to take away is Brooke Lopez stayed healthy a full season and had a dominant year. Well, rephrase that. Not dominant. Dominant would have been if they were winning games. But he averaged over 20 points and 7.8 rebounds and shot over 50% from the floor. So a really good, I'd say, top five center year. Thaddeus Young had a career year in, uh, in rebounding and points. I think it was 14-9, and nine, which was like a career year for him. You know, uh, I told you about the positives I saw from Hollis Jefferson and, and, and McCullough and Brian Bogdanovich showed some glimpses in Brown. So those are the main takeaways. And obviously, moving forward, the Nets have cap space and free agency, and you got to hope that they get at least one or two good free agents. They don't need superstars. They don't, at least not yet. I mean, they need good players, though. You know, I, I kind of look at this as a two-year process to get good players. You bring in good second-tier players now, like a Ryan Anderson and a, and a uh, Aaron Aflalo or an Eric Gordon and, and maybe even Mike Conley, if you can get him. Those type of level players, which 
plays with Lopez and Young and the guys they have now, which would make the Nets from a, a, a one of the worst teams in the league, third worst team in the league, to a legit playoff team in the East. Probably, I mean, if you got Mike Conley or uh, Mike Conley, Eric Gordon, and Ryan Anderson, just those three guys, which you, the Nets have easily could get, um, the Nets would go from the third worst team in basketball to probably like a five or four seed in the Eastern Conference, maybe even higher with Lopez and Young. And then what happens is the following year of free agency, now you look a very more desirable for bigger name free agents to come your way, whoever, whomever that may be. So that's kind of the way I look at this going into free agency now is get some good second year players. If you, hey, if you can get Kevin Durant, you get Kevin Durant. But, you know, go after some second level players and build for the future and get good younger players. Don't go and get these has-been players that have maybe one year left of being useful. Get some younger guys, like a Mike Conley, who's going to be 28. Same thing with Eric Gordon. He's going to be 28. You know, players in that age, you know, age group. Ryan Anderson would be 27, I think, 28, 27. So that's what I would do if I'm Sean Marks, and I'm pretty sure that's what his plan is as of now. We know the Nets don't have a draft pick. Um, they'll probably maybe buy a second rounder or something. I don't know. I'll look at that moving forward. But overall, my overall grade for the season for the Nets is a D um, because of me personally thinking that they should have been better. Um, but like I said, Jack went down, and when that happened, all was lost. Maybe I should be a little bit more realistic. Maybe I'll give them like a C because they they, they, they managed to salvage and make the, something out of it by getting good, play, decent player development and finding Sean Kilpatrick and, you know, the I don't I don't know. It, it It's somewhere around there. You know, maybe we'll just meet in the middle and say C minus or D plus because just, I just really felt this team should have been better. I, I really, really do. I really felt that. Even with Jack going down, I felt they should have at least come close to about 30 wins. At least 30 wins, you know. But whatever. It is what it is. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, my next Nets Boy episode, I think I'm going to do five reasons to believe in the Nets. Just to end on an op optimistic note. Because things have been very negative and, and, uh, and uh, pessimistic. So that'll probably be my next video. Um, of course, if the Nets do any other moves or something, like trade a player or do anything else, um, I'll probably have a video about that. But for now, I see only one more Nets Boy episode for this year, and that would be my top five reasons to believe, which will be next week's video probably or so on and so forth. Um, we are in the during the NBA playoffs right now. I'm not going to really talk anything about other than the fact that, like everyone, I see Warriors-Cavs in the finals like last year, and I see the Warriors winning the whole thing. That's all I'm going to say about that. And so keep your eyes open for the next Nets boy. And until then, this is Nets boy shaking off this season and signing off.